Hey, everybody. Welcome back. HSC Podcast 75. Big Box Steve on the mic with the Big Smooth and Fresh Wes. It is football season, and so we're going to talk football today. But I do want to, before we get started in this, um, we're going to be talking next week football predictions for the NFL. So we're going to get into our uh who's going to win their divisions, who's going to make the playoffs, talking fantasy football. So if you listen to this one, uh, as we get into the NFL season uh, next week, don't forget to tune in because that's going to be a big one getting ready to start the NFL season. If you are watching on uh, YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and like, uh, leave any comments, anything you want to hear about. And uh, for those of you listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, thanks for listening. Uh, love seeing the continued uh growth in uh spotify so maybe someday we'll be a popular spotify podcast (laughs) (laughs) Wes is like what no uh we i was gonna jump into our poll but nobody took our poll last week so oh Uh, so uh, uh, maybe it's because my poll was bad (laughs) it was our our Vegas poll because we talked about Vegas and that mm, one was yes. the last poll we did. And yeah. uh, my question was, what was a better Vegas casino, MGM or Caesars? So, what do you guys think? I mean, I go with MGM. I really haven't stayed at Caesars, so I don't even really know. No, I think it's Caesars has, has more to do. Yeah, I was gonna say they have more restaurants, and <clears throat> nicer restaurants and stuff. I mean, they've got the shopping mall area and all that. Right. Um, yeah, MGM I've stayed at, and it's it's huge, huge casino, but it doesn't have much to do. There's like a downstairs area that has a few shops, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, I would. I think I would go to the with Caesars. Trail. I think I'd go with Caesars personally, <laughs> just because there's a lot more to do. I think it's a, I think they added a lot more stuff to it. But MGM, like you can't beat their sports book either, though. Like they got a pretty amazing sports book. So that was a tough one. So no responses to that one. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into today's podcast. I got a a great. And so next week, you know, I think you guys, I want to, I want you guys to get into this more because I just don't want to keep doing it on my own, but we're going to start with our HSE podcast trivia. So before we get into our topics tonight, we're going to talk trivia. So tonight's (laughs) trivia topic is going to be movie quotes. So I'm going to give you the movie and you're going to try to tell me what is the famous quote according to a lot of different sites, from that movie. I'm going to misquote all of them, probably. <laughs> you guys ready? Mm-hmm. No Google, so nothing. Come on. All right. Uh, let's see. Let, let's start off with uh, Derek. Why not uh, Big Spoon? We'll, we'll go first here. Movie is Dirty Dancing. No one puts baby in the corner. He's got it. One for Derek. All right, Wes. The Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. One to one. Uh, Derek. uh, Scarface. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Say hello to my little friend. Say hello to my little friend. Two to one. (laughs) Uh, Wes, a league of their own. <laughs> of course. Um, there's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball, two to two. They're not super hard, so I imagine you guys will get most of these. Uh, uh, Derek, Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> Life is like a box of chocolates. Uh, Wes, Rocky two. <laughs> oh, no. Not Rocky two. Um, 
Oh. Um, yo, Adrian, I did it. Yo, Adrian, yes. Good job. You too, good one. Oh, Derek, this is a tough one. Gone with the wind. Oh, that's awesome. Let's see that. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Yeah, we talked yep, about Frankly, that. my dear. Yeah. Wes, the Sandlot. Um, you're killing me, Smalls. Killing me, Smalls. Yeah, you guys are killing it. Uh, oh, this is might be a tough one. And a little thinker, Derek. American Pie. Oh. Oh. Um, American Pie. Gosh. I'm trying to think of like there's so many different quotes, but I don't know what the most famous one would be. I don't know. Uh something about Stuffer's mom. No, I, I thought I thought uh, okay, so miss on that one. Wes, you uh, get a one time at, at band it. camp. Oh, you got it. Uh, I'll oh, give him that yeah. one. I'll give you that one. This one time at band camp. Oh, uh, that was Wes. Kate one. Oh, <laughs> you can't get help from the peanut gallery. <laughs> uh, Wes, Apollo 13. Houston, we got a problem. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Derek, You're uh, giving Wes the easy ones again this time. You know that, right? Come on. I'm just reading off the list. <laughs> uh, taxi driver, Derek. Oh, no. Talking to me? Talking to me? Uh, Wes, the Godfather. <laughs> okay, God. Uh, I just want to show you. Um, uh, what is it? Um, I went blank. I don't know. I can't think. <laughs> All right, Derek. Here's your chance. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not so funny as I can't think of it because the problem with The Godfather is we've seen it so many times. We have so many quotes in our head and it, right. we can't think of like these, the popular ones. Obviously, it's something with Marlon Brando. Yeah. It's just, I forgot. Nope. Nobody's going to get it. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Yes. Derek in the lead now. Uh, Casablanca. This is going to be a beginning of a beautiful friendship. That was close, wasn't it? Here's looking at you, kid. Here's looking at you, kid. Uh, Wes, the Princess Bride. (laughs) So long as this, yeah. Um, Oh. It's I can't I <laughs> I have it I just can't I haven't seen it so many years. Hello, I'm Inigo Montoya. You killed yeah, my father. Prepare uh, to die. Prepare to die. It uh, looks like they're for the win. Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> I don't know if it's the right one, but I would say, uh, how do you like them apples? How do you like you you like apples? Well, I, I got like a number. Them. How do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What well, Derek for the win. Good job. Movie quotes, Derek for the win. Hey, you guys did pretty good though. A couple tough ones in there. I'm not yeah. sure about uh, Derek getting help from the sideline, but you know, we'll uh, we'll give him the win. I still would have won. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you guys didn't get with Godfather. Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> no, the just, problem uh, is, is we've seen it so many times it's right, not like right. <clears throat> no I mean I could have done Godfather part two but yeah and you know got stupid <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> the cause got stupid well and so so here's the problem is there like so Wizard of Oz for example right it kind we're of went back and forth anymore. yeah with the Toto we're not in Kansas anymore um Let's see what other one. Uh, uh, Casa was it Casablanca? And let's see what else. 
actually a wizard of oz no we already said that one yeah so there was a couple of them that you could have went other ways but i tried to with the ones that were most popular you know with each of the the movies because a lot of movies that there was other movies like uh, terminator for example you know i'll be back you know it's like i'll be back you know and, <laughs> and uh, uh, Star Wars was another one. This was so back and forth between these two on Star Wars. May the force be with you. Yeah. And no, Luke, I am your father. Yeah. Well, that's Empire, so, though. Right. Right. Well, yeah, I guess if you're talking about Star Wars, but the series, right. So they didn't really specify. So, yeah. So a lot of them went back and forth that way. But overall, good trivia. Good job. I think Smooth wins wow. it all. <laughs> all right so let's jump into uh this week's topics uh first thing talking is we're gonna talk some sports we're talking football it's football season <laughs> we have college football we have nfl uh one of the topics we want to hit tonight which we, we we've hit before we talked about a little bit earlier but uh, a couple things with that talking about this big 10 pac-12 stuff like this is big big happenings um, and I think it's an interesting topic, and Derek, you, you brought up something about, you know, maybe the Big Ten should stay at the Big Ten, maybe create a Pac-8 now that some of the Pac-12 teams have moved to the Big 12. Like, let's talk about that. Well, because I was looking at the conference, and I'm like, you got the original Pac mm. Big Ten, and then you've got Maryland, Rutgers, Nebraska, and I think it's Northwestern. Wasn't well, Northwestern? Yeah. Because they were like independent, right? And then if you had them with the four Pac-12 teams, then you keep the Big Ten together, and then you have this little Pac-8. So, so you're saying you're saying you're not saying pull the original Pac-12 teams. You're saying pull those four teams with UCLA, USC, Oregon, Washington. Right. Yeah, because they're not going to want the four remaining Pac-12 teams. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like it's kind of like the way they set it up where they have I mean, the way the Big 10 what do they call it? legends and something else? Like you almost kind of if you do that, you're kind of like setting up the original you know, Big 10 and you call it like legends and then you call like the other 10 or 8, you know, what would you call it? Just the new <laughs> The, the new alliance. Big Ten. How about let's <laughs> the, do the alliance, like yeah. the Rebel Alliance. Let's yeah. So, stars. what if you just had two conferences though, and you split it that way though, with the new with the people from the Pac-12 that came over, those four teams you just talked about in one side of the conference, and then the originals on the other side of the conference. Yeah. And then and you have you, a Big Ten championship game between those two. Between those two conferences <laughs> that. Yeah, because you got to feel like whoever comes out of each of those divisions would be formidable to play in a in a championship game. Yeah, I mean the Big Ten part is going to be a lot stronger. Yeah, because you're going to have Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Michigan State. I mean, I guess are my... they are they really that much stronger than UCLA, USC, Washington, Oregon? Well, Ohio State and Michigan are, I mean, it depends on if USC comes back. Yeah. Even if, like, let's say USC is at their top, Oregon, Washington, and UCLA are, are not anything close to Michigan. It's in history-wise. Yeah. I mean, Washington, what, has a, did they did they technically get a share of a title one year? 91? Yeah, like 91. But also, you, you posted uh, Michigan's only won four bowl games in yeah, the last 20 true. years. So maybe Michigan has good regular seasons, but they ain't winning nothing. Right. Uh, Ohio State would be the only team there that's really winning a lot. Uh, because we're talking football, too, right? Uh, right. I think you start I mean, once you get into sports. basketball, then right. it might be formidable because you have UCLA and, you know, Oregon's been tough recent years. Maryland. Right, right. right. I mean, and, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I kind of, 
at first I, I was a little against this whole all this moves, but now I kind of want to see how it plays out. Just to see, like, you know, maybe they do create a good power conference. Um it, maybe it helps recruiting, you know, in some of these other schools. Right. Maybe it helps um compete with a little bit better the SEC yeah. in a sense. Yeah. Even though that they added Texas <laughs> and Oklahoma. I, I mean it's so, so the tough. SEC still got Florida and Texas now. Yeah. So it's good, you know, Big Ten, they, then they have Cal now. They have California, but that's still one big state, whereas the pipeline in the SEC, they got Texas and Florida. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's tough to compete with. And it's not just that. Like, you know, it's Georgia is no slouch, and not talking about Georgia the team, I'm talking about Georgia the state as far as recruits mm-hmm. goes. You know, there's plenty of real big, good players in Louisiana come out of state too. Of Georgia and Louisiana and Alabama like they're still mm-hmm. getting a lot of really good players and now you add in a Texas and a Florida as as states that's big yeah where you know Oregon Washington USC UCLA they're kind of all pulling from California yeah so you got one state they're pulling out of which mm-hmm. is tough which might make it make those teams worse now because you're going to have Ohio State and Michigan pulling out of Cali. Oh, yeah, you know, potentially. Uh, I mean, which I don't I don't think it's, I I maybe I, I kind of like what you said because I would like to see maybe the conferences split that way. Maybe to set up two conferences in the Big Ten or whatever you want to call the their division, their, their whole conference now. I don't know if you can call it the Big Ten when there's 18 teams. Yeah. But um, I think how they split it up is going to make a difference. You know, who 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 potentially plays who at the end of the year is going to be important. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, the beginning of the year, we, we already know who Michigan is going to play because Harbaugh got suspended three games, right? Self-imposed suspension. And they're playing like UNLV Bowling Green and somebody <laughs> else, like the first three games. He's just, he suspended himself. He's like, okay, right. I'll just take these three games off. It's like, really? Yeah, you yeah go, for games that doesn't even matter. <laughs> it doesn't really <laughs> matter. It's like, your that's second your non conference schedule here. Could win those games. Yeah. Next year or the next couple of years, it sh- those, <clears throat> those, those non conference games should be a little tougher than that. Well, now uh, that they're eighteen teams, you know how many non-conference games are they going to be doing? They well, can't it's really not. Play I mean, I mean, you're playing, you're playing like either a USC or a UCLA or a Washington in there instead of Bowling Green. Yeah, that's kind does, of the, yeah. How does the SEC like? I don't know if you guys have looked at this. I haven't looked at this much. Did how do their non-conference games look now that they have so many teams? Are they playing? Multiple uh, uh, three teams out of conference, two teams out of conference, or what are they looking at? Well, they are right now, I think, but they were talking about cutting it to only a few because I know that was the rumors. Because Texas right. and Oklahoma still aren't there, yeah. I'm gonna check Florida's schedule here. I know Florida plays Utah first, but. Well, because with eighteen teams in your league, your your league, why would you even need to play out of conference right. games, right? Like you could literally play every game of the season with someone in one side or the other. Yeah, Florida has three non-conference games, so they're still playing three right now. But mm-hmm. I don't know what it's going to be next year because right. they were talking yeah. about playing more SEC games. I think if you're going to build big division or leagues like this, or, you know, conferences, I mean, um, you should be playing everybody in the conference. There's no reason if you have 18 teams in your conference, why all, you know, 11, 12 of your games can't be conference. Why even play anybody else? Yes. 
again, it's 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 kind of some of the not the non conference. They kind of want to hype the beginning of the year, right? As, they lose, you know, they're they're they kind of previewing. Okay, how the SEC do against you know different teams? Someone gets a oh. shot at maybe upsetting the SEC teams in Atlanta. You know, you have the Texas uh, kickoff game. Usually, you know, is interesting. It's out of conference. You know, I think you've got four or five of those kickoff games where they well, try it to mix like it up. Right here that um, the SEC next year will play their eight conference games, and then every SEC institution has to play one other power five. Okay. That's cool. Uh, that, so like, That's better. Yeah, it so, is. So Florida next year's got Miami, Florida State, and Central Florida as their nice. non schedule. Dude, that that's tough. Wide right. Wide right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh Georgia's playing Clemson next year. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, I like I think I like that too, where like and I, I do actually it I get that the small schools they need that coverage to play the big schools. Like some of those they pay a lot of money to come in and play those teams. Yeah. Um, so they can get their, you know, uh, their hype. But like even smaller schools that are good, like Troy and Coastal Carolina, I mean, yeah, it really benefits for them to play. Like they can yeah. match up against a, a bigger, like maybe a bi- Big 12 or a Big 10 school and play them on the road. It gives them more because those pro Coastal Carolina and Troy are legit programs now. You know. Well, look what like Eastern Washington was doing for a while there. Eastern Washington yeah. was going in and playing Oregon oh, yeah. and Washington and Washington State and all those teams, yeah. you know, to at the beginning of the year. Yeah. To try right. to like North Dakota. Yeah. Well, same thing. Why why wouldn't you do that? If you're North Dakota, why wouldn't you want to go in and play? But that's the thing is <laughs> and if I'm Ohio State or whatever, do I want to play those schools? No. Because you have to give them money, right? Just for them to try and upset you. Yeah, and and like even Michigan, I remember a couple years back, and I I want to say it was like a it was like Marshall that almost no, it wasn't. It was a uh, well, they lost to Appalachian that, State. Appalachian State, and they oh, I, they they they, they lost. Been. No, remember when they lost that on that last second? Like field yeah. was a field goal block. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, like that's that. a that's a tough start to your season because they were ranked like number two. No, they were. Really high. They were up I mean, there. they weren't that good. I mean, well, that they're... was when they had Denard Robinson. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they're ranked number two. Well, this you is know? years and years ago, uh, but they lost <laughs> that game. But they also there was another one Appalachian State recently was real close to winning and lost. Yeah, and they lost. Right. Yeah. So, but I do like that, like you, power five, right? I like that yeah. idea. Of, Michigan was number in, five. They're number, number five. Okay, they're when, they're when top they five. lost when they lost to Appalachian State. So, right? yeah. I don't know. I, the that? idea of that power five is as let's say you're going to play three out of conference games, but one of them has to be a power five. Like that, that's a good uh, plan for setting up these schedules right because that gives you at least one solid game against a solid team that's not your conference they're coming from a a decent conference and it's not you know middle tennessee state Mm -hmm. and i'm sorry it was it was chad henning was the quarterback yeah (laughs) chad henning yeah that was a crazy i remember that game that was that was insane um uh, so for me college football right now i think it's like you know let's see what's coming a lot of changes happening and then are they gonna are they willing to adjust right to adapt to these changes they're making to make college football better like if you're gonna make these big power conferences if you're gonna start taking teams and putting them all in these one like how are you gonna make sure that you create good schedules, you know, and, and make it uh, kind of effective once against these guys. Once you start going to that little bigger playoffs, people won't be as afraid to 
play harder teams because they can lose more than one game. Right. It, one game's not going to kill you. Overall, right? just, I think it helps because it's like, then it's just not like, as long as they keep those non conference, those interesting matchups, because you also don't want to just make the regular season just really dull. Well, like, and play, play, play nobody. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, and that hurts your strength of schedule. It hurts your your rank your uh, ranking. So you got to play uh, some good teams. And want to reiterate one more time on Appalachian State, Michigan. Wes was kind of <laughs> right. After they lost, they fell out of the poll completely. They went from <laughs> five to out of the top twenty-five. Yeah, because you lost to Appalachian State. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next week, they lost to Oregon. Yeah, thirty-nine to seven. Yeah, then they had a pretty good rest of the season, though, didn't they? I, I feel like that. Then they like came back for the rest of the season. Yeah, they won eight straight and then mm-hmm. lost to Ohio State. So yeah, they came all the way back and then ended up losing to Ohio State at the end. Yeah, and then they lost to Ford in their bowl game, so they were finished at 18th rank, and that was Lloyd Carr's last season as coach. Yeah, yeah that's uh. Interesting stuff happening in college football. Uh, uh, let let's get a little bit in NFL. I think uh, we're talking about NFL a lot. A lot. Of, we got quite a few topics here tonight for the NFL. Uh, I, I thought you know, Wes, you know, your Jonathan Taylor topic. That, that's interesting to me. Uh, what does that mean when you say let's talk Jonathan Taylor? No, oh, he's got a he's got a hand on there. He's... You hear that, Wes? A Jonathan Taylor? Yeah. What do you What do you mean when you say let's talk Jonathan Taylor? Like, what, what's what's this? Uh, what's the topic? And kind of explain that and what's happened there. No. Well. I mean, so Colts basically said, hey, you know, you, you know, you, you can go talk to other teams, I guess. But I saw, I think Derek, you said the Ursay quote, like where he wants a first round pick for him. Yeah, or the same as what they got for McCaffrey. So it was like a second and a third, you know, or a second. horrible comparable to the value of a first round okay. pick yeah second to yeah <clears throat> and so what i thought's really weird and i don't know if you guys heard what stephen a smith said about Diggs on monday he came out and said that Diggs doesn't want to be there oh no Diggs is super unhappy right now too yeah and i i don't is it is it because of josh allen or is it because he's just not valued like like chase and jefferson i mean he's not targeted or what i mean i don't understand no, no idea but think about it he was unhappy in minnesota, in minnesota too yeah some some guys just aren't ever happy they think the grass is green in other places but then he also came out and said that what Stephen a said was bs and that yeah yeah and so yeah people are telling me no that's that's dumb Stephen is just saying stuff but it's like it makes you wonder so, well, so okay. here, here's a question with a guy like Jonathan Taylor, though, right? Obviously, he had a phenomenal rookie year. Uh, and then, so last year, he was hurt. Like, he got injured. So, you can't put up the kind of numbers you're going to put, you put up the year before when you're hurt like that. You have a young guy who's capable of dominating games running your offense you know why why is he so undervalued give even given the the state of running backs these days he's not one of those like looking for his extension of his rookie contract like he's still pretty new to the league <clears throat> well i think he is up next year yeah now he yeah so you got not this year and next year so you got two more years basically no, I think he's a free agent next year. Is he his fourth year? Because 
30. Well, he well, he wasn't a first round pick. Oh, so he only got a three. Yeah, okay. So he got a shorter deal. The problem uh, is, and this is why Ursay is kind of an idiot. You spent your draft capital on a raw quarterback. And he should know, you know, history shows like you bring in these young quarterbacks and if you don't give them anything around to help them, they're going to fail. Right. So you're going to go and trade your most valuable person to help him away. And the other thing is, is though the hubris of it is trying to get a first round pick for him because the, the fact is, the team trading for Taylor is then also going to have to sign him to a contract. Yeah, yeah, right. So who wants to give up a first-round pick and then sign him for like $15 million a year? Yeah. Some teams yeah. that are desperate at, that they want to win this year. and you know. he, he's, he is the type of guy, though, that can help you win right now, though. Yeah. And to Derek's point, he's probably the most important guy on that team to Anthony Richardson. Yeah. Cause you have to have a strong running game. Otherwise who are you going to be? You're going to be Justin Fields. You want Anthony Richardson out there running for his life? Like Fields no. has done. No, I mean, and that's the, that's the thing about Jonathan Taylor. You can, you could put him in s- several different scenarios and, and you can put him in Buffalo and saying, you know, Look at look at Josh Allen last year. He ran way too much. He put his body out the line. Why why not just put this guy, you know, in the backfield? He you run a power running game in December and January, and I guarantee you players aren't gonna want to tackle him in Buffalo. And Josh Allen doesn't have to put his body out there, and he can save himself for the playoff run. You can put him in a few different scenarios, but like I said, it's paying fifteen million for him. Yeah, it's like you win now, you win this year. That's what you're getting him for. Yeah, the Dolphins roll the dice, and you win this year. If not, you're kind of screwed. But I also, that's I mean, I didn't, I for some reason I forgot, but I I think Derek makes a good point about his capital isn't as strong as it is because he doesn't have that next year on his contract like a lot of other like the first rounders do you know because you could write him out a little longer i think maybe they're saying okay he's 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 almost on short time now right and so and that injured. that makes that makes more and sense right right running and, backs you get injured then it's kind of like is it going to happen next you know a red I mean? flag yeah yeah that 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 does make a little more sense and you got to also look at the demographic of running backs right now, like what's happening with running backs. Like they're treated kind of like a second class citizen mm-hmm. in the NFL uh, because you have so many of these performing running backs that were maybe fifth or sixth rounders or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's... It's, a, it's a tough situation for Taylor because I think, in my opinion, Jonathan Taylor's. I don't know. He's got to be a top five running back, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's hard. He's only had two seasons and only one full season. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't really because you know how if we look in the history of running backs, there's been a lot of good one one great year running backs. Yeah. He had a lot of wear and tear because you know he's at Wisconsin. What do they do to running backs? Yeah, yeah they run a lot the in the cold and wedge. Yeah. Wedge. But he's but he still had a really strong rookie season, like one of the best you'll see, right? All right. So that that's an interesting um that's an interesting thing that'll play out there. Uh also let's move to the next topic because I think this is a really good topic as I start to look into this more and what's what you're talking about. Like what quarterbacks out there are likely or could lose their job this year? And so I kind of wanted to get you guys' thoughts on that because I think that's a good topic. And so, Wes, since you brought it up, like what did you have in mind? Like give us just one. Like who are you thinking? Like who could lose their job this year? 
Mm, let's say uh I say Mac Jones. Yeah, that's one of the immediate ones I thought about, right? Zappy. Bailey Zappy. I mean, it's just I know this O'Brien hype and and you know that he's 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 the quarterback or he comes in and fixes quarterbacks. But it, it all comes down to you know your skill position people, which I think it's a little unfair for Mac Jones because they kind of lack that. It, he lacked an awesome offensive player last year, but I don't know. I think Zappy's got more confidence. I think you've seen him in the regular season and preseason, and I think you know if so things he, get kind of if things get kind if they go like five. Yeah, right. Yeah, if it gets dicey it's early in the play. season. Yeah, I could see that too. If it gets dicey early in the season, you could see Zappy playing more, maybe even into a starting position, you yeah. know, halfway through the season. Be careful, Wes. If Mac Jones loses the job, then the Raiders will probably get him next year. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. We're, we're going to get Zach Wilson next year. <laughs> we'll get <laughs> Zach Wilson over. No, Over dude, Rod Rodgers is going to retire and Zach Wilson's going to be starting in the no, in New York. Rodgers is going to play till he's 47. <laughs> so he can no. prove everybody like. Yeah, I mean, if they do well, I could see Rodgers continuing on, but I could also see Rodgers like them having a bad season and just being like, I'm out, I'm done. Like done with he doesn't get what he wants. He is somewhere he's not going to get what he wants, right? I mean, I don't know how many interviews I've seen. I mean, he's always on TV. Everyone's interviewing him. Oh yeah, like he's like he's in New York now, dude. He's like like, he's he's like it's just he's in New York now. It's a different market, dude. It's a different type of media when you're in New York. Well, and you know he's doing everything right. He like switched his contract around so they can right. save cap space that, and all this that stuff. Is because, yeah, the Dalvin Cook thing, yeah. It... I think he just wants to win now at this point, which is also why I think if they don't win, he's going to get frustrated. He's yeah. like, look, I've, I've done things. I've done things to, to help, and yeah. now we're not winning. And and it's the, it's the offensive line. And, of course, that's the weak point. But that's even more. That's why it's even more important. Oh, did, you, that, did you see him going after Bacchiardi? And the GM was like, "Nope, nope." <laughs> yeah, because you can't afford him. <laughs> uh, how, okay, so I'll, I'll throw out one that I thought of as I was looking at this. I think, I think Baker Mayfield could be replaced by Kyle Trask. Sooner than later, I think they played about the same. I think Mayfield got the nod based on pure experience, you know, played more games. And when you go in, you you have a team that is not good, your team's not good, and so you want to put in the most experienced quarterback at least at the beginning. And once you realize that you're just going to lose every game, it's time to put in trash. So I think. One of the first replacements you'll see of starting quarterbacks is Kyle Trask of Baker Mayfield. Yeah, and 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 not only that, you want to see what you have with Trask when you start evaluating next year. Like you're pro- you might have very easily a top three pick right, just right. the way mm-hmm. they look right now. And and for them that's okay because you're gonna I mean, you need a quarterback, you need to know what you have with Trask. Right. You already know what you got with Baker Mayfield. Yeah, no. And it's just not he just he's not the answer there. He's not a long term fix for sure. He's not. Uh, but you so, need to know if Kyle Trask is though. Yes. Yes. And so for, for for me for my money, if I would guess on the first starting quarterback, I'm going Kyle Trask to, to replace Baker Mayfield. First one to go. Probably, yeah, when you think about it. When you just look around the league and you're like, yeah. Well, it's this year all the rookies are starting. Right. <laughs> so there's not a lot of replacements coming in from those uh, <clears throat> those rookies for sure. Right. Uh, but 
Oh, well, Derek, go ahead. Who do you got? Like, what's what's well, there's, I mean, looking at it, the only one, I guess, if we're going to say rookie taking over, I guess Will Levis for the Titans. Yeah. If well, because you're, you're off, really not, who are you really replacing? Like, like all your quarterbacks are trash. <laughs> well, it's Tannehill still, isn't it? Yeah. Malik Wolf is, is all Dude. right. Well, the, uh, well, the other the one, preseason. because of the preseason and because of more injury wise, gotta say, man, Farva, Aiden O'Connell. Oh, shit, over I, knew it. I was just waiting. So, so, I should have timed it. 14 minutes. I 14 <laughs> No, so here, <laughs> uh, uh, so let's talk about that for a second because there are significant chances of not performance replacements but injury replacements right and Aiden O'Connell is a legitimate opportunity to replace based on injury of Jimmy we're gonna Garoppolo. do we're gonna do two quarterbacks right we each get two yeah, yeah I, do two. I, I, I think that's a legitimate thing because Jimmy Garoppolo goes down he's prone to injury that's a legitimate injury replacement I I don't I can't see Aiden outperforming Jimmy I don't see that happening on without an injury well, I'm just looking. This is the Raiders' schedule. At the Broncos, at the Bills, play the Steelers, at the Chargers, play the Packers, play the Patriots, at the Bears, at the Lions, play the Giants, Jets, at Dolphins, Chiefs, Vikings, Chargers, at Chiefs, at Colts, play the Broncos. That's a tough, tough schedule. Yeah, that's not easy for sure. So, so you're, I'm thinking you're you at best, have, you know. Yeah. By the time they're like, no, nah, we're out. Let's see what Aiden O'Connell's going to do. Jimmy G's not getting us 10 wins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> but here's the thing. Jimmy G could be injured by week three. Yeah. That's, I what, think, that's, I think, what I, that's what I looked at. And I said, this is an injury potential replacement. Right? And it's not going to be Brian Hoyer because he looked horrible. No, no. and he just, he's and, never and, been and anyways, the where you got Aiden O'Connell anyways, you didn't really give up anything for him. If anything, you kind of already know this is a guy that's potentially probably going to be a backup unless he comes out and he plays during the season and he plays lights out. He plays light, lights out. That's great. If he doesn't, you got a backup. You know, it, yeah, Brian Hoyer. No, I, I don't even know how he's on a roster. It's just <laughs> he's a it's patriot. Like, he knows when I system. see him come in as a backup, I'm just like, are you kidding me? No, there is yeah. the USFL. There is the <laughs> XFL. There is Canadian football. Not, not at his age, dude. There is what is that? The uh, Fan control league. I mean, come on, Brian. Really? Yeah, he could he could play flag football in, in his backyard, dude. But he's just not good, so he's too it old. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Is he too old? He's, he's pretty much. He's making a living as like a third quarterback coach, yeah, yeah. pretty right, much. Right. Yeah. Holding the clipboard. I mean, he'll probably end up being a coach anyways. So. Yeah. And they now have it where, because of the whole um, Broncos thing. You can keep three quarterbacks on your 53 man roster. Right, right. But right. they don't have to, the third quarterback doesn't have to be part of the game day roster, but he's an emergency quarterback who can still play. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think that's a good change, to be honest with you. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Like, because why would you ever should be put in that position in a it's playoff a game? Role. Yeah. Come on, dude. San Francisco roll. Like, you shouldn't have to be put in that position. Well, it was also what, the Denver one. Didn't they have to start a yeah. running back or something? Well, yeah, I mean, like obviously Christian McCaffrey was getting ready to to play, or did he not play? He did play too? Right, he did play. He threw a couple passes. Like, yeah, man, I thought this would go better than that. I was like, geez. No, that to to me that that's uh, I think I don't I'm not mad about that, but uh, there's also. I think uh, in San Francisco, even though I think Brock Purdy probably, you know, he's the starter. <laughs> I think there's injury potential there too, um, or bad play potential. I think both happens in San Francisco, where 
they probably don't need a great quarterback to win. And so if the quarterback's not doing everything they need or gets injured a little bit, like I think there's some potential for some quarterback swapping in San Francisco. Which one are you going with though? Trey Lance or Sam Darnold? Right. I, that's the thing. That's what I mean. I think you, that you have three quarterbacks. I don't think are any better than each other. And it's kind of like a, you might as well just uh, shoot the arrow up in the air. Everybody runs a different direction and whoever it hits, that's who's starting. Well, it's the difference is I think is Brock Purdy manages and doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. Trey Lance has the most talent wise and Darnold has the best arm talent. Well, but and the most those two have the worst decision making. Yeah. Uh, Darnold has, a, he's gotten a lot of experience though, more than these guys have. Mm-hmm. And he's got, he has improved. You, yeah. You've seen him improve. He's not consistent as you'd like him to be, but there's been games where he showed flashes. Yeah. He's and Darnold, he showed... Darnold's constantly been in situations where there's a lot of dysfunction. And yeah. in San Francisco, that's not that. Shanahan is going to coach him up as and get him to if he's if he can't make it there, he can't really make it anywhere, you know. <laughs> so, so Tannehill was the other one I had on my list. Obviously, I agree. I think Tannehill could be easily gone quickly, uh, especially if they start losing early. They want to see what they got with Will Levis, anyway. And, I mean, and Willis, right? They want to see what they got with both of them. Yeah. Saw what they got with Willis. It was pretty bad. <laughs> was Go pretty on. Bad. That was just a bad couple games. Give uh, them another chance. Uh, Wait, what do you guys, how do you guys, there's not really a replacement there, but what do you guys think about Kyler Murray? Well, right now they're going McCoy, but I would go Clayton Toon. Yeah. Because yeah. what's the point? Okay. You're not going to be good. Why go with Colt McCoy when you have a Clayton Tune out there who could see what he's gonna be able to do? But do you continue with Kyler Murray? Like, what? What's? I think he's gone. Well, once he comes back, probably. Yeah. Unless you're gonna trade him. Yeah, I think I think I think they're looking potentially of trading him because they think they're just hedging their bets that they're gonna be bad. And if you're bad, you know. Well, and don't they have the Texans' first round pick? I forgot uh, from this last draft. <laughs> Next year, right from from this year's draft. No, next the, year's draft. They get no, no. I mean, from the trade in, in this year. Yeah, draft. yeah, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. Because they traded. So they have their pick and the Texans' right. pick, which right, could be right. two top five picks. Right, could be two top five picks. Right. Yeah, look at getting Caleb because, Williams and Marvin Harrison. Because, I mean, first of all, could you believe that trade? I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching the draft and they're like, the Texans now have the third pick in the draft, <laughs> I was oh. like, no Did way. you Did you no see Will Anderson way. this weekend? Yeah. Oh, he was going, oh, oh man. Oh, my God. I'm like. That's just not it, fair. You got he, Stroud and Anderson like that. Well, that's, we talked I'm not about, a Str- look. I'm not a Stroud fan, but Will Anderson he played, he played better beast. this week. You saw it. You saw it. He's yeah. more comfortable. He played better, but still to get the, those two guys. But I still so think I guess, they should have done what me and Steve said was draft Anderson, suck, then get Caleb Williams or Drake May next year. Right, right. That's what I think they should. I just yeah. They should have kept. They should have traded. They should have drafted Anderson at two, and then just said, you know what, we're building defense this year, and then we got our pick next year to go for Caleb or Drake. Absolutely, 100%. I'm just – I mean, who knows? I don't – I mean, maybe CJ will prove me wrong. Maybe he'll prove me wrong. Yeah. I don't know that he's the quarterback of the future for them. No. Oh, like, that's a tough one. And, and not only that, still offensively, there's so much dysfunction there, and there's so yeah, much I mean, bad – there's so and much now you're bad gonna put him, in history. Look, dude, it would have to be the CJ, perfect situation for him to be. You're successful. putting CJ in this really bad place. Yeah, your defense isn't built yet, dude. But by the end of next year, I believe D'Amico Ryan's will build a great defense there. Oh yeah. And by the end of next year, going into the the pre the next year after that, 
you're now you're going in with a good defense. Yeah. Because you know D'Amico Ryan is going to build a good defense. And now you bring in a rookie quarterback with a great defense. And there's nothing better than that for a rookie quarterback. Right. But you never know if D'Amico Ryan, he might, I mean, of course, he's kind of playing politics and stuff. It's like, okay, everybody wants me to do str- draft Stroud, and maybe I will. Maybe he'll work. Maybe he won't. But after two years, you know what? We'll just go out and get a quarterback wherever we can find one. Because I I got a defense, we can I mean, get a quarterback. You know? I would have personally. Here you go. If you're going to take two and three, I don't. I think you get Will Anderson. You're happy as a clam. I think Will Anderson's going to be a beast for a long. Then take Jalen Carter. I would take. I would have took Anthony Richardson, and oh, then yeah. started Davis Mills. Yeah. Let Let Davis Mills play another year. Get beat up. Build Richardson from the bench. And then be like, okay, you're done, Davis. Now Richardson's coming in. Yeah. Yeah. That would have made some sense. Yeah. I would have right. done that. So I, I think for me, the CJ Stroud draft was terrible. The Will Anderson staff draft was amazing, but you could have just done that at two, kept your draft picks and, and moved on. So, but you know, that's what NFL franchises, they reach for quarterbacks and they don't yeah. look at a big picture because they're afraid they're going to get fired. Right, and, right, right. And yeah, and and that 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 fan base is fed up. I mean, I'm I'm sure they're really fed up about everything. And so when you draft a Stroud, that's almost like here, fans, here you go. Let's, well, because you know, when the Lynch, they, we're trying to prevent the Lynch. <laughs> they haven't you know? had a good quarterback though, you know. Like so, it, it does make sense to try to say, look, we went big on quarterback this year. I mean, what Matt Schaub? That was their last good quarterback. Well, Deshaun Watson. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, we'll show, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have no sympathy for the Texans because they're called <laughs> the Texans. Oh. You're in Houston. You are the Oilers. <laughs> oh no, I, I know. I guess I don't, I don't even. I don't it's hard even for really me to see, leave and look at him. I don't see Watson as a quarterback anymore. I don't know why. Dorian Thompson Robinson. <laughs> yeah, is his Deshaun gonna lose his job? No, I thought about it, uh, but Mod's kind of in between, so I, it would have to be Mod. But still. I, I feel like once you're Thompson. canceled, like it's hard to like <laughs> keep your. Yeah, job. but it wasn't really canceled because he, canceled. he didn't. <laughs> he didn't get canceled. He got a new contract right, that pays right, him right. all this money, with the incentive part where. He got paid hardly anything last year while he was suspended. Dude, it's just it's robbery. It's just <laughs> actually highway <laughs> robbery. It's like, how yeah, is the dude. world set up like this? He does that and he gets like a quarter of a million, 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 million dollars. Million. <laughs> really? Oh, and everyone horrible. in Cleveland was like, "Oh man, he didn't do nothing." Wait a minute, he didn't. Do <laughs> yeah, right, he didn't. He didn't, he didn't do anything wrong. Right. No, anything get, wrong. Nothing to see here. <laughs> no. In my mind, he's canceled. Uh, so let's hit our last NFL he's canceled topic canceled from here. private masseuses, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> of ever being alone with a woman for the rest of his life. He's going to have to do the uh, Chappelle show, like the contract, before he's right, with the contract, the contract. I love that. Dude, that Chappelle show. Dude, Chappelle show is so good. Uh, let let's finish off NFL with this topic because I I heard this and I want to talk about it, which was uh, NFL teams that are likely to implode this year. So when you look, think of the teams out there, like who's going to have that implosion year? You've seen it year over year. You see it happen from time to time. You know, what, what so are teams we talking teams, teams that made the playoffs? I mean, or... maybe they made the playoffs that last year. Maybe they were just 500, but who's going to come out and just like <laughs> lay an egg or implode as a franchise? Or they're just going so downhill that there's no – it's the biggest rebuild that you guys are going to see. So I'll throw mine out first. Here, here's who I think is going to implode. The Dallas Cowboys. Well, that's easy. I mean, that's that's they not do that easy. Almost dude. Every year, no, they <laughs> own the playoffs. I'm talking about this is the year where the Dallas Cowboys win four games. 
Oh. They're, no. they're gonna they're going Dak Prescott is gonna implode. They, yeah. We are they're they're relying hundred percent on Tony Pollard. Their defense not gonna come to play. Like my team that implodes this year is the Dallas Cowboys. So what do you guys got? Who's gonna implode? I have two teams. My first is one where Steve will say I'm a hater. Um, but I think it's the Denver Broncos. I mean, they already kind of imploded. Last I know, but year. I think they're going to implode more. Because, I just thought that. Because they got Sean Payton, who's right, supposed right. to resurrect Russell Wilson. There's, you know, Russell, everything was because of Hackett. It wasn't because of the players. It wasn't anything like that. It was a mulligan year because Hackett was the worst coach in the NFL. Sean Payton comes out and talks trash about Hackett. Right, right. Then they come out and play. Well, if they lose to the Raiders on opening week, it's going to start to implode. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I guess when you're talking about like franchise implosion, you're talking about it's a second year in a row. You gave up all these picks for Russell Wilson. Then you brought in this amazing coach. If they don't have a good year, it is kind of a franchise implosion at that time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I do get that. Um, but with the same sense, like, yeah, they kind of imploded last year too. So they, they did. Yeah, suck. but they came up with the scapegoat. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that was just, you know, right, this year was right. different. Not our fault. Uh, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. Denver is definitely on my list as well. So I'm not, I don't argue that. Wes, what do you got? Uh, I got the Pittsburgh Steelers because there's this noise out there that they're going to be good. And Kenny Pickett's the answer because he had a couple good games last year. But I think that's all going to backfire when they when they go in division and look they got to play Cincinnati twice, the Ravens twice. You know, they're they're just their defense, right. of course, is legit. It's, We're it's talking okay. about their offense, and I just don't think I think it's going to blow up in their face. And Tomlin's yeah. going to is going to not quite. They're not going to make the playoffs. And I think Kenny Can, Pickett is trash, dude. I don't care. <laughs> He is, dude. He's trash. But (laughs) the the one problem, though, is Tomlin doesn't have losing seasons. No, he doesn't. So doesn't. So that's why I'm saying when he has a losing season, it's gonna hurt. It it, it is an explosion. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. They're like, hey, dude, we're gonna be good this year. It's like, you know, you're playing in your division. Oh, better. I mean, better hope Burrow doesn't play about six (laughs) games. And by the way, by the way. George Pickens is better than Justin Jefferson. I I I I've heard that noise. Get too. out of Come here! Come on, really? Get it, he's out of better here! At which sport? <laughs> but, Wes, I don't Volleyball? think the Steelers are worried about Burrow because he throws five interceptions against them. Yeah, not always, but yes, it's a. He's just setting him up for when he throws seven touchdowns yeah. this year. Wow. I I don't, I don't, I think the Steelers is actually a legitimate. Uh, pick there because they play they're playing tough division right Baltimore and Cincinnati are both really good Cleveland's yeah. not horrible so yeah you could lose a lot of games yeah and and, and just their schedule is not easy yeah I mean not easy at all it's just it's, it's and kind of Kenny Pickett is your quarterback so that's hey. the problem I have dude I don't I why why are you why would you draft Kenny Pickett and then like, hey, this is the guy we're going with? Well, it was between him and Malik Willis. So, <laughs> I'll, tomorrow, I'll, I'll, you know, can I pass? Can I pass? Tomorrow, you can't pass. Tomorrow. Like, he got Mitch Trubisky, and don't get me wrong, Mitch is not oh. the best quarterback in the world. No, he's not good. But is he no. different than Kenny Pickett? No. That's like, what I was just going to say. If they're like the same person, it's like, you you spent all that capital on a guy right. that basically mi- that you sense. already had. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think Pittsburgh can have a rough year. Yeah, he has small hands. He has small hands. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, 
You know what that yeah. means, right? He's got small hands. <laughs> small hands. Small feet. Or you wear small gloves. Uh, what do you – any other teams out there? Like, there wasn't a lot of teams when I looked at this that I was, like, looking at really bad implosions. But um, I think oh, Minnesota. Yeah. that's That was my next one. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, Minnesota. Was my next one. Yeah. I end of Kirk Cousins. Yeah, the end of Kirk Cousins. You get rid of Dalvin Cook. If Jefferson and Cousins don't connect like crazy, like I think you could be in trouble because yeah. your defense is not great. No. Well, they had like what wasn't their point differential like the worst ever? Yeah, it was insane. <laughs> but they still had this yeah. crazy winning record, Which even though bizarre. I think they were. That minus, doesn't happen two years minus, in a row. Weren't they minus points at one point and like yeah, they were like eight and two and, two and minus yeah, like, like five and points? Minus like, points, really. Yeah, so Minnesota would be my the only other team that I was looking at going like this could be an implosion. Yeah, this could be like a downturn of a franchise where I, it's a serious rebuild situation. I kind of want to go a little bit with the Chargers a little just because of their coach, right? Like, I'm not I a mean, fan of their coach. I can't even believe he's he's still coaching. Talk about the why. worst. Yeah, like you guys should be happy about that. I don't know what you're why you're mad. But talk about the worst decisions a coach can make. Well, arguably everyone's talking like Justin Herbert is up there with the top quarterbacks, right? Yeah. And, and you can't Arm even get talent, out of the first yeah. you, you miss the playoffs right. and then can get out of the first round. But yeah. here you go. I mean, maybe this is a time where you actually can blame the coach. Because I'll take Justin Herbert on my team anytime. Well, think about it. The Raider game, the coach calls a timeout when the Raiders are trying to run out the clock for a tie. Right. A tie, they make the playoffs. That's a coaching decision, right? Yeah. And yeah, so that, I, that was probably, and being a Raider fan, I know it's that, but then for it to be like, oh, you're going to do that? Well, F you, so, we're going to go and win now so you don't make the playoffs. So you're telling me right now if the Chargers like, hey, I'll trade Justin Herbert for Jimmy Garoppolo, you guys would be like, no, I don't want him. He's oh, no, trash. I don't think I don't think <laughs> Herbert's – I think Herbert's top 10. I don't know if I'll go top five yet. Yeah. Until he wins some games. Not right. only that, he, he, he's he got like 13 fourth-quarter interceptions. It's great. He, th- yeah. he throws a lot of interceptions when it matters. And, and, and you know that's he's not got really Keenan Allen about. and Mike Williams too. Yeah, yeah. it's not uh, like arm, he came into the league with like the Colts receivers. <laughs> no. Arm strength wise, you know, deep accuracy wise, he he's one of the better in the game. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, quite decision. He's still young, so yeah. And and it's a dysfunctional franchise. It, that's sure. the other problem, it's right? So the other dysfunctional, problem is, and so that's part of the look. Problem. Let's talk about Mahomes for a second. Mahomes is a is an amazing talent, right? But yet the play calls that he's in often put him in a chance to make great plays. Right. Yeah, if Mahomes would have gone to the Texans or something, what would we be looking at? Exactly. Right. Or the so, Bears, you know, since yeah. they <laughs> and you'd be yeah, he wouldn't be no Justin Fields, that's for sure. <laughs> or Mitch Tarisky. Yeah. So I, I think there is a little bit of that with Justin Herbert. Uh, but I I'm, I agree. I don't think he's – I wouldn't put him in the top of all quarterbacks at this point. But I think he has the potential. I think he's got the athleticism, the arm strength, you know, the accuracy, the things that go with that. And I don't think you'll know personally until you put a decent coach with him. How, how, can, how can you say that this is the coach that I'm going to run with? Like, I don't understand how the Chargers – Keep him I, around. I don't understand why Sean Payton didn't go there. Right, right. Well, that's the whole thing. I, I that's I, what I thought was going to happen. It was a no brainer. It's like this guy's gone. We're halfway through the season. We're like he's gone. It's just they're just playing. They should just fire him week eight. They should fire him now. It's like what are they doing? Then you blow <laughs> that lead against Jacksonville, and then you're like he's done. Oh, it's, oh, no, it's the offensive no. coordinator. Right, really? right. <laughs> Dude. The, the, <laughs> there's not – that's a pretty unbelievable game, that Jacksonville Chargers game. Yeah. In the playoffs. 
How many people turned that game off? How many people were like, I this put is money a on it. It's I only won two real bets last year, and they both were those comebacks. Yeah. Minnesota, I won 350, and I won 300 on that one. That is funny, because I, I wasn't watching the game, and then I saw the score, and I turned the game on because I was like, Jacksonville's going to make the comeback. <laughs> They're, They're coming back. back. <laughs> and then no, I was like, oh, horrible. the first time, I'm like, oop, yep. <laughs> yep, here it goes. No. Here it goes. And sometimes you just know, when you, like, we've watched enough football. You can see, it's like, you know. the oh, you just feel it. Yeah, you feel it. The Raiders Chiefs game where they um got the no roughing passer on car and all that stuff went. I was like, oh, Chiefs are gonna come back and win this game now. Oh, the you Bengals, can just tell in the the Bengals Chiefs playoff game, same way. Yeah. Like when all that stuff started happening for the against the Bengals, you're like, oh, Chiefs are gonna win this game. They're going to the Super Bowl. Yep. Yeah. All right, so Good stuff, football. Uh, next week, please listen. We're gonna let's we're gonna get into our um, division winners. Talk about you know who's making the playoffs, division winners, and talk fantasy football next week because uh, we're only two weeks away. Yeah, I think last year, Steve, you were the best out of three of us picking winners. Yeah, but you still won the uh, the weekly. Picks. Weekly and then the playoff game, the right. games wise, but yeah, you won. Yeah, yeah uh, of, of, who was going to make the playoffs? And... Pre preseason, who was going to the playoffs? Yeah, I, I actually did pretty well. Um, Didn't we so, all three of us though have the Chiefs not making the playoffs? No, that was the worst part, dude. It's so funny because <laughs> we we're like the Chiefs are going to be trash. Oh man, did I? Dude, I think we, we all did. did. We all did. Uh, and it's because Tyree Kill was leaving, right? We're all like, you know, we were all on the Raiders bandwagon and you Honey Badger. You have the Ravens, the right. Bengals, and the Dolphins, and the Bills. So and... let's just remember, I feel bad. Tune in for our picks because we're really good. <laughs> I, I really just we didn't was... pick. The Super Bowl winner, <laughs> right? To make the playoffs, but I was still like seventy five percent or something, though. Like I still I had no, I still had like seventy five percent of the actual playoff teams, so I did well with the with the overall. Yeah, mine was horrible because I had the Car Cardinals making the playoffs and the Raiders. That yeah. worked out. <laughs> no, we're still. Oh man, yeah. Someone asked me today, hey. What's your Super Bowl pick? I go, come on. Dude. Let me finish preseason. I was like, yeah. I don't know yet. Yeah, you well, can't make that. What happens? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to that place that Aaron Rodgers went to in Southern Oregon. I'm gonna go. <laughs> what is it? The dark room. The dark room. I'm gonna go to the dark room. I'm gonna come out with a winner. Right. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna come out after the Super Bowl's over. What? Yeah. What yeah. I I missed the whole season. All right, so tons of football coming next week. Let's get in because we got to have a top five. I give you a top five every week. Uh, obviously, if you watch, listen, and watch the podcast, you know, you know, it's a movie theme. Uh, so we're going top five psychological thrillers. What's mine? And this is a little tricky, so we'll tell oh. you. Some things you might not hear because we're using IMDb like we always do, and they're uh, they have some they they don't list everything as a thriller, so that might minus some things you guys hear from us. But uh, top five psychological thrillers. Even with that, I still had a pretty big list. So there's a lot of good ones on this list. Um, I'll lead off my topic. Uh, so I'm gonna go with my number five is Shutter Island. It's Leo. Uh, it's not a movie you can watch a bunch of times and enjoy because it's one of those where when the you the spoiler after you know what happens, it's not as fun to watch. I watched the preview and I was like. <laughs> yeah, I got like, that. I was like, uh, I don't need to see this movie. I, I I love the plot. I love the uh the you know how the twists that happen. 
um, I'll admit that there was at points where I knew because I watched, you know, so many movies. But for people who don't watch a lot of movies, I think it's great when it's it's a real great plot twist at the end. It's very uh, psychological in the movie. But I also believe that uh, I think Leo played a great part um, along with his, his counterpart uh, played a great part. So I, I got Shutter. Uh, uh, yeah, Mark. Is it Mark? Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo, I think, did a great job. So so I got Shutter Island at five. My nine number fives from 1998, and it is Apt Pupil. Really? Don't I, you I can't say I remember this. Oh, it's Ian McKellen, Brad Renfro. Um, Brad Renfro is a kid and he thinks his next door neighbor is a Nazi, a hmm. former Nazi officer. So he right. blackmails him to tell him all his stories and everything. And then stuff happens after that because he's kicking a hornet's nest with a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> what, great what's movie. it called? Apt? What? Apt. A pt pupil hmm. it was a stephen king short story that was adapted into a movie well now i gotta watch this have you seen that wes it's been i've only seen it once i, I don't even really remember it oh that sounds good i like it that yeah. sounds like a good psychological thriller there wes what do you got at five I got a classic known as Vertigo. Mm. Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. James Stewart. Basically about a guy who has Vertigo and has to solve a mystery with a girl. And the weird part about the end of the movie, and I remember watching the first time as a kid, is like, is that the girl? Is that the same girl? And you're just like that the <laughs> whole time. Yeah, because that's that. what he's doing too. Yeah, and yeah, that's what he's doing, and you're just like, no, it's like, yeah. Is, is it better than Rear Window though? That was tough. It was it was either that or Rear Window. I had Rear both Window of those was on like my list. Six. Yeah, yeah, I had both those on my list. Um, I love both those movies, but of course, I I love those old ones, those especially the old Hitchcock. That's so good. Good, uh, Derek. Number four. Well, it was Vertigo, but I had one that was going to be moved up if uh, Vertigo get. <laughs> He's like, I got so it. I'm going with uh, 2004 Mind Hunters. Yeah. A group of um, prof FBI profilers go to an island and they're, you know, true in training, but then they all start. Ending up getting killed off. Yeah, LL like J classic. I mean, you gotta love LL Cool J. I do like that movie. I think that's a great one. That that was on my list. Didn't make the top five, but it was up there. All right, Wes, number four. I got Fight Club. Well, we had to take that off our list, but go ahead. <laughs> I I remember watching the first time in theaters, like what? Like it's just it, it just screws your mind so much. Yeah. Just it does. watching it. And you're just like like really? Like, how did I not see this? And then you just go back through it. You and more times you watch, it's like, oh, that's that. You see, that's what he's doing. That's what right. he's doing. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. If if uh, so, I took it off my list because IMDb didn't have as a thriller. It would be my number one easily. Right. Like I love Fight Club. I think it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. And you're right. Like every time you watch it. After you originally watch it, you just keep noticing things and noticing things. And that's what makes it such a good movie. That was my first DVD purchase I ever made. was Fight yeah. Club. And there is a point where Ed Norton 
he he was just doing it in Hollywood. Like he was just one of the best guys you'll see in yeah. in every movie he played in. Like I, I Ed Norton is this guy I could he, watch. He was he was like, oh, he's gonna be the next De Niro. That's what you were yeah. thinking. When he's doing all those movies, like that's gonna be the next De Niro right there. Yeah, and he had he he also had that like I I mean, I don't want to say boyish charm, but because it makes him sound like Leonardo, but he had like he had more than De Niro had. Like he oh, yeah. had that he had that extra charm that you mm-hmm. really you really loved in an actor. And yeah, at one point I thought he'd be the biggest star on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. And Fight Club's amazing. Um it would easily be on my top five, but I followed the rules. So <laughs> there are no rules. <laughs> there are no rules in fi- the, the only rule of Fight Club. The only rule of Fight that, Club right? is we don't talk about Fight Club. Yeah, yeah Wes, you don't talk <laughs> about, Fight about Fight Club. It's the only rule. Hey, I dressed up as him for a whole <laughs> only time I dressed up the last 10 years. Uh so number four, I have uh copycat. Uh Scorny Weaver movie. It's about serial killers, which makes it cool. Uh, it, it's it's great because it's a she's got agoraphobia; she can't go out of the house. But then she's like this amazing like serial killer analysis, and uh, Harry Connick Jr. just kills it in this movie as the killer, original killer, but not the copycat guy. It's such a good movie, and it's very suspenseful. I think they really captured at the end of the movie. So if you haven't seen Copycat, it's definitely worth the watch. It will definitely keep you like kind of on the edge of your seat. So I got Copycat at four. <laughs> All right, Wes, number three. Mine's Shutter Island too. Yeah. I mean, I actually didn't see the movie until a couple of years after it came out. I was like, ah, do I really want to see that? I got to run on DVD and I was just like, yep, that's Martin Scorsese. Yeah. You know? it, it's well done. Like, yeah, it it's, well it's, done. yeah, it's not a movie I would, I would, one of his movies, I love watching Scorsese movies over and over. Yeah. Even you Raging can't... Bull is, yeah. <laughs> I, I do it and I'm like, I shouldn't do this because it's, it's just painful. <laughs> But you still want to watch it multiple times. Shutter Island, it's because it's one of those movies where you once you see it too many times, you you lose the the wonder almost. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Um, Which is also my number three movie that loses a little bit of wonder, but it's still such a good movie. And it's a sixth sense. Like Bruce Willis and the same thing, like I felt a lot like Shutter Island when I watched it. And I also, so this is a little different because Shutter Island, I'm a lot like Derek, where I, I kind of had an idea what was happening just because I watched so many movies where I don't know what it was about The Sixth Sense, but I was just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> realistically, here's the problem. Like when you have a dude that messes up his wife just doesn't talk to him that's just normal like that's where they played us on that one they're like look dude dude's wife's just ignoring him just being mean to him you're like yep that's what wives do Mm -hmm. (laughs) so they tricked us they tricked us with the wife uh but still (laughs) yeah go ahead (laughs) i was gonna say it looked it's it was more like they were an estranged couple Right, right? right, because she was going out on dates, and it was like, oh Which man, is very believable, right? Yeah. That's what, I, yeah. And then, um, you know, I think the kid did a great job. I also just, you know, I think the storyline was good. There was a lot outside of Bruce Willis that they kept you not focused on him in particular, which helped that part of not really knowing what's going on. So, six cents got to be up there for me. All right, Derek, what do you got at three? Well, you can't have a psychological thrill list without a Christopher Nolan movie, right? <laughs> um, so my number three is Memento. Oh, I love Memento. Yeah. That's I mean, that's it's intense. 
Yep. And that's one where you, you know, a guy has amnesia and doesn't know what's going on. And so he's trying to piece everything together. And uh, yeah, Guy Pierce is great in that movie. Right. It's almost like Dana Carvey in Clean Slate. <laughs> no, it's, it's obviously much better, but uh, no, I do love Memento. I've seen that tons of times. It's also a movie that I don't mind watching over again. So I think it's and really it, good. what it has two Matrix people in it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. And you know what I've noticed about Memento is a lot of people haven't seen it. Well, it was was that his first or there he might have had one before that yeah you know he had a lot of those movies you know memento prestige inception right. all of them were kind of like right oh, i love prestige too prestige is on my list i found out imdb I know. is a thriller mm -hmm. thanks imdb right another ed norton in there <laughs> no that you're thinking of the illusionist Oh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, Prestige, yeah, that's... Uh, Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. Christian Bale, I think Christian Bale, yeah, Christian Bale. Uh, so that's three, Wes, you gave your three, so we're at two? Yeah. Yep. Two, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go a little back in time for my number two, I'm going Fatal Attraction. Michael Douglas in this movie is like it's like at most men's like fear <laughs> and you know there's just a lot to it it's not as the same as a lot of the newer such <clears throat> psychological thrills because they're not trying to trick you a lot but there's a lot of just psychological crazy stuff happening <clears throat> so you kind of know what's happening <clears throat> but still it's like really messing with your mind and so it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen it so many times. And, and it's Michael Douglas. Like I just I I've always loved him. And I think he does a great job in this. So I gotta put it up there. I had to put it in I couldn't put it at number one. I might have put it at number one, but it's still one of my favorites. I'll put it at number two. That is when I was talking to Caitlin. That was number one for her was Fatal Church. Yeah. It's so good. So my number two is a little off beat, uh, but a 2003 movie called Identity. Yeah. It's not that John off Cuse. beat, but yeah, I can see yeah. a lot of people not seeing it. John Cusack, um, Amanda <laughs> Peets. Isn't like, a, I think Ray Liotta's in that too. Um, 13 strangers stuck in a motel on the side of the road and then stuff starts happening don't want to give too much away because that one's got yeah you can't because if, if people want to see it you ruin the movie for them right <laughs> but identity like people should see that it was my favorite movie like it i could maybe put in the top 10 but i, I like it a lot I like the, it's that I love John Cusack plus I love the whole premise of it right yeah and it helps if you are a Cusack fan too because he can be like 13th floor Cusack <laughs> and he can be identity Cusack like he's got a different level of what he does 1408 <laughs> or 1408 actually that's what I was thinking 1408 yeah. is the one I was thinking um yeah, it's a good movie. Wes, what do you got it to? Got a 1990 film known as Misery. Oh, yeah. And I just, when I first saw it as a kid, it was just like almost traumatizing because it's like, oh, that would suck. I mean, just when he, when she, she, busts his legs it's just like oh my god dude, dude when she puts the block in between his legs and breaks his ankle is yeah. that not the most brutal scene why you got to do that to sunny <laughs> no you can't do that sunny <laughs> um the other problem i have with misery is i feel like we all saw it as kids yeah right 
And you're like, it was so brutal to watch that as a kid. Because it wasn't like Friday the 13th, right? Jason running around with the hockey mask and a yeah. machete. I literally was like, when she puts that block in between, it's it's still to this day, it's traumatizing to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not a huge Kathy Bates fan. That was on my top of my, that was in my top 10 for sure. But I do Either love Stephen it. King. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Although Kathy Bates does kind of play that psycho pretty well. <laughs> So can't really, really, and a great story. I guess the storyline's great too. I think that makes the movie almost more than anything. But James Con, or is it James? No, sorry. Yeah. What's his name? Is it James Con? Yeah, it's James Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does a good job. Uh, number one. Here we go, Derek. I I kind of think we might have all the same number one because it hasn't been said. <laughs> And we've talked about it on other shows. And that would be Silence of the Lambs. I think we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> I, I mean, what can you say, right? Does yeah, it get never... any more psychological and thriller and like good plot and good acting? And, I mean, and, like and, every... and, and like 12 year old kids watching it like <laughs> without parental supervision right. like yeah that's pretty much part of it too <laughs> like where's my mommy <laughs> after here when you're watching uh, it it has everything i mean if th this is all number one so we might as well all talk about it right it has everything you'd want to see in a movie when you talk about plot when you talk about acting like it just it for everything right I don't know how you get better. Yeah. No, I mean, and and just the thing of having Anthony Hopkins isn't even the villain, really. Right. But like the whole psychological part is him. Well, he yeah he plays like he kind of facilitates the psychological thriller of the movie. Right. He makes it more than just like FBI looking for this dude that's putting people in his basement. Yeah. Yeah. And then like every time like she goes to see him, when I and granted I saw this you know many times when I was younger, like it just freaked me out, you know, every time like yeah. she's going down to talk to Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. It, it's like um it's like they call it today like a trigger. Like every time, it's a trigger. It's a trigger. Is that what they call it? Trigger. Oh, it's, it's the it, worst. It's been worst spoofed. word on earth. <laughs> like her going down to talk to him has been spoofed in so many things. Right, right. But Even, of course, you know when you watch as a kid too, I'm like, man, she's kind of hot. You know, I was like, well, like she's kind of <laughs> I mean, hot. It's like, I'm what not are you gonna lie. Like, like, I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a Jodie Foster fan. Jodie Foster was kind of hot in that. <laughs> you know, she was she was above average. Yeah. No, I can deal. I can, I can, I can live with that. Like you, you gonna be mad about being married to Jodie Foster? No, nah. You know, it kind of might arms. be. She's a lesbian, so she doesn't. Know. <laughs> so you might not be getting much going yeah. on. Well, well, you know what? I'm a lesbian. She had, she, she had a bad boyfriend. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I think I got Silence of the Lambs. Wes, you got Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, yeah. So. Number one overall psychological thriller. Another great Anthony Hopkins movie. Yeah. One of my he's he is my favorite actor. He's really good. Um, I even liked uh I had not high on my list, but Fracture. That I thought that was a good one. Yeah. I thought you did a good job there. I'm surprised no one did basic instinct. Oh, I don't man. remember. I don't remember it. I've only seen it once. Mm -hmm. We like Basic Instinct for a different reason. And, and her name is Sharon Stone. <laughs> but that yeah. was a total psychological thriller. No, though. it was. It it was, was that really was a good. big thing. It's like you had to watch it. Like it was like one of those things like if you're a guy, you have to watch this movie. <laughs> and I watched it once. I'm like, yeah, she's hot, you know, but uh, you know Kathy Ireland. No, she's no Kathy, Kathy Ireland. Ireland. 
necessary roughness. <laughs> like uh basic instinct is a, a really good plot. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, actually. I've seen it multiple times. Yeah. There was a lot, like, so getting into honorable mentions, you know, there's a lot of other thrillers that when you, you know, especially what I noticed is that, you know, like pre maybe 1960. Yeah. Jeez, did they have so many. Hitchcock, man. Hitchcock. Yeah. Because we didn't even talk about Psycho. Right, Psycho. I, 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 I Rebecca, Rear Window, Psycho. Rear Window like, should have been a top five. I, it was. I the only reason I didn't put Rear Window on there was mm-hmm. I was just like, man, if anybody's actually listening, like they're just not going to get it. it <laughs> these, but these that was like days. thriller. Yeah, it is a thriller. I was like, yeah, it is. It is a thriller. I just, I don't know. Yeah, Vertigo was more of a thriller. Yeah, I like Psycho. I think there's a lot there. of people. The thing is, is before 1960, there was a lot of screw. There's a lot of screwed up movies. Like it's just really eerie and weird, and the and the music, just the music, just makes you like, oh, it's kind of yeah. Weird. It's very dark too. There's yeah, lot, they're very dark. So they did a good job. Cool. All right. Well, that's our uh, psychological thrillers top five. I think that pretty much wraps us up for the night. Uh, Don't forget to tune in next week. And uh, this is when we're going to get into our uh, our big NFL stuff, fantasy football. For those of you still listening, I'm going to throw out a fantasy football uh, to join HSC podcast fantasy football. So we're going to fill up our league, hopefully, um, drafting near the beginning of the season. But next week, we're going to talk about, you know, fantasy football picks and uh, our division winners, our playoffs. See if we can do as well as we did last year or better. Maybe keep the Super Bowl winner in the playoffs. <laughs> I think that was our real big downfall. There's two downfalls we had. Not maybe we team. shouldn't even brought that in the up. Raiders. I I, didn't, I <laughs> forgot about that. I don't know. We all went the Raiders and we didn't pick the Chiefs. That was our biggest. Wow. That, yeah. that hurt. Yeah. Thanks, Josh McDaniels. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe you should blame Derek Carr. <laughs> He's a pro bowler. Yeah. So you make the pro bowl with that record, like you could. <laughs> Telling you this much, yeah, I think he's got a good chance of doing it this year too. Uh, well, definitely. I mean, I think New Orleans is in good, good shape, considering they're just in a trash division. Like, I don't see how they can't win that division. No, I think you have to try to lose that division. To be honest right. with you, if they don't win that division, then all the ant- people that hated Car- all the Raider fans that hated Carr will be like. Like told you so. <laughs> well, but New Orleans already has a good team, though. That's the problem. It's yes. like you're already pretty good. So uh cool. All right. Well, let's wrap it up here. Any final thoughts? Yeah, I mean gonna find out some some pers- who's gonna be the surprise cuts coming up. Yeah. It always happens every year. It's like what? Who got you know what undrafted free agents make it? It's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I love the end of the when they do the last roster cuts. I think that's that's cool. I mean, I hate it for the guys who get cut, but it's yeah, good to see that. Love to watch their dreams get shattered. <laughs> yeah, I love to watch like their the dreams rock. get shattered. Like the rap rock. <laughs> uh, but it, it it means it's the beginning of the season. Like rosters get finalized. Like you're ready to you know get going, and I think that represents a, a good part for me every year of, of the NFL because <laughs> I can't wait. Like can't come fast enough. All right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like any comments, uh, especially top fives, any top fives you want to hear. Um, I got a couple from not our comments, but from my nephew, we might hit this later in the season. Uh, but in the comments, you guys want to listen to any top fives you want to hear. 
preferably movies or sports. <laughs> we'll do those. And then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you guys next time.